Hola amigos, es Jorge Antonio with Mi Tierra. It is my pleasure to have Kim Dozier with us here on this program. She is a friend, she is a realtor, she is a daughter, she is a mentor, a coach, a great influencer in the community and is always giving back. And it's my great privilege to have her on the program to be able to share insight, insight to her heart story and understand a little bit about what motivates her and why. So Kim, welcome to our program here. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Kim, for people who don't know who you are, can you share with us a little bit about uh, who Kim is and uh, where you were born, where you're at now, and kind of what you do? I don't, I don't understand. I think everyone knows who I am. <laughs> <laughs> for those that are catching up that are a little oh, slower. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so um, my name is Kim Dozier. I live in Denver, Colorado. I'm originally, I was born in Jersey, raised in New York did a stint in uh, LA and then came here for six months, 20 years ago. I yeah. got freaked into the mountain life. I lived in Vail for a long time and now I live in downtown Denver and go to Vail whenever I can and sell real estate. I had a big history in the fashion business and then I got tired of um, fitting women to jeans. And so I went from denim to dirt. Now I'm in real estate. How cool is that? And why real estate? Well, I have an interior design degree also, and I don't know, I just, um, I like the process of it. I like, if I, you know, I used to, I used to love getting into people's minds and, and dressing them so they felt right. Now I love to getting in people's minds and families and figuring out how to house them to feel right. Hmm. It's yeah. just fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. And how important is space? It's everything. Yeah. But, I mean, Number one in, in, in life is health, right? Yeah. And, and, and after that, um, you know, love, friends, and family. Because you don't have health, you don't have that. And obviously, our life is hugely surrounded around that right now. And, um, you know, I mean, it's everything. Coming home and having your sanctuary, a place to hide, a place to hang your hat, feed your family. It's everything. Yeah, and, being, yeah. and being financially smart about it also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So before you got into the real estate, you talked about the uh, fashion uh, side of it, and, and and kind of what what draws you to to that uh, this this that side of things. I made my addiction a business. I love shopping. I love clothing. I love style and change. And um, back in 1989, oh, aging myself, I. Um, created a wardrobe company. I used to be a wholesale rep and I created a company that would service the movie and television business as well as production houses. And I would buy below, God willing, below wholesale from the contemporary market and then do cast and crew or work with the customers on a certain, certain theme for a particular show or movie. And then I would also do office parties um, throughout LA. I did that wow. for 10 years. And then I moved, well, got married, got divorced, moved to Colorado. And I realized at that time in the early 2000s, there was no fashion here. So I started doing a, a thing called Rack and Roll Clothing Company. And I would rack up my clothing, roll it into a house and throw a clothing party and it was huge for a while. And then fashion moved in at Den fashion moved into Colorado and took my job. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. I just, mm -hmm. you know, it gets old and it, it was time. Yeah. 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 So how many businesses have you had? Well, in, in, I mean, in, I guess my first business was a house cleaning business in college just to make money. I used to clean houses and bartend. And yeah. then, um, I started sideline sales in LA, rack and roll here, and then now four walls that fit real estate. So I guess that's four. Yeah. And so you've always been an entrepreneur. You, you, you can't do like the nine to five, go sit in an office. Let me connect you to a phone and, and I'll tell you when you can go on break and when you can get lunch and stuff. No, I don't know. I don't know. And I'll even <laughs> tell you when you can go on vacation. I'm truly allergic. Um, and it's funny, you know, you think like, you know, when you work nine to five, a schedule is amazing and you think you start your own company and you work less. I, it's not the case. Although I can take that three day weekend and not worry about, 
I have to worry about my, obviously my clients and whatever I have on my plate, but yeah. I love, I love, I love change and I love differences and I love, I love a, a challenge. And I think that not having a set schedule leans to that. And I don't want to yeah. be told where to be. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this stay in place at home thing is not working for me at all. Yeah. <laughs> told this bird in a cage, you know, you got to let it fly, yeah. fly free and show its feathers. Right. And be out and about and stuff. You know, this, so right now we're, we're going through, uh, let's say we were to watch this video in 20 years from now, we're going through a thing called COVID-19, the coronavirus. Um, how has it changed you? Do you think it's made any effects on your life? Well, I don't know anyone who has it. I mean, it's a pandemic. Um, we already know people that have gotten it. And, you know, I, you know I, I haven't had any close friends pass away, but there have been some. Um, I think that, you know, we can talk about unemployment or people that, you know, want to take advantage of the system. When I see my friends that are restaurateurs, lives being destroyed, not because they don't want to work. And, you know, I, I don't, it's my, the empathy that I have for not only people that are fearful of being sick, but of just of the livelihoods of people's lives. I just, it makes me want to cry all the time. And um, I've done every single project in my house that you could possibly imagine, as well as cooking, which I love ordering in. And I drink a lot of wine. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't, you know, it's just, and then here's the thing also, uh, and I really, how has it changed me? Uh, I think it's making me really aware of just how crazy our government is and all that and how, and how just, it's just, I can't believe that we would take advantage of people and in a situation in a time like this and lie to them yeah. about numbers and or cures and all that. It's just mind blowing to me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm extremely sad about it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have had quality downtime. I think that's a lovely thing and all that, but I'll pass. But you know what? This is also the truth is in the last few decades, we've been extremely spoiled. Um, and pandemics exist and they're going to come back. And so we need, we can't live through fear. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people are living in fear right now and holding themselves back uh, or even falling victim, you know, uh, to this. Uh -huh. And you know, this is really our opportunity to rise up as a community. And, you know, I yeah. always see you involved in our community, doing what you can, um, you know, fighting the good fight uh, to be in that liaison and that voice for people who may, cannot speak sometimes. Right. Um, how did you get that way? What, what made you that way? I don't, I don't see myself as a liaison or somebody who can speak. I just like to have fun and I know how to throw a party. And um, I don't, I guess I don't see restrictions all the time. You know, like I just feel like, why wouldn't we? So yeah. I, I don't, you know, there's, I mean, we live in a, you and I are neighbors and we live in a, um, a large community, a vertical community. And obviously there's tons of personalities and age differences and cultural differences and everything. And, you know, we, t we tend as a society, and I'm, I can't say just as people, because I don't believe that's true, but as a society in America, I think that we're complainers. And I don't, I'm definitely not a non-complainer by any means, but I just sometimes don't feel like, well, let's do something else, let's have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I've learned that sometimes when complaining, it's because I'm trying to find fault. And then once I find it, what do I want to do with it and right. why? Right. What's missing? Let's fix. I like solution. I, I like identifying. When, when I had my clothing company, and it, um, I had a bunch of, you know, I mean, it's, it's a completely female business. And, you know, it's like being a hairdresser. There's a lot of drama and stuff that happens. I found myself listening to people going, okay, here's my problem, or this is what happened. And they want to keep talking about the same thing versus going, okay, now what's the solution? And so I, I, I'm from the East Coast, so I'm, people will tell you I'm abrupt. And I would say, okay, do you want to keep repeating it or do you want to go to solution? And I like solutions. Yeah, yeah, it just makes it easier to get to the, to move on with life. You know, like, how can we well, fix it? I think that chemically in your, body, brain, spirit, everything that just com continuing to complain about the problem does nothing but increase the problem and 
set off, you know, negative synopsis in your brain and all that stuff. And so getting the solution. And I found myself during this time being shut off from people. I thrive through people and contact with people. And that's been extremely hard for me because I find that I hear myself complaining a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I've really, in the last two days, I've been extremely conscious of that. And I realize I need to feed my soul and my brain with nature and positivity and like, here we go. Less news, because we know that's crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's picky, learning to pick the battles. Because we have a choice to be right or be happy. Right. And, and, and it's like, okay, you know, I can't save everybody. I can't save everything, you know, but I'm going to go enjoy my life and go do what I can. And if you need a glass of water or something to help you to the other side, uh, but outside right. of that, you know, I, I can't right. do much. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's I, I, the, uh, the being right thing. It's very interesting when you find yourself, maybe you're hundred percent, you are hundred percent. Right. And then just finding myself going, does that, but that is that important. And I like, I like, do you, do you want to be right? Or do you want to get what you want? And what I want is to live a life of joy, fun, peace, you know, yes. fulfillment. So even though the human experience, I think, takes me into places I, I know that my soul doesn't want to be, but you know, what the heck? Yeah. You know, so you just being conscious of that, like I'm walking down the wrong road, let me back up, you know, and go this, down the road that feels better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you, how do you get that intuition? How do you know, what is that feeling like? I think it's practice. I think it's awareness and practice. I think yeah. that, you know, knowing, you know, we all have our childhood experiences, our tendencies, our levels of vibration, nothing's better than the other, it just is. So knowing yourself, I think is the key. And then when you, when those old stories or those old things, the little villains in my head wanna scream, which right now is hard for them not to, they're, they're you know, they're right there. So. Yeah. Just being the master of your own thoughts yeah. Yeah. as much as you can. Yeah. What I've learned is sometimes it's easier to not try to be the savior of everybody. My, you, I, you can't. And there's some people I don't want. I, you know, like, I mean, you know, I, I just, I had a brother that was a drug addict. And so, like, when you, when, I think that. My, uh, I mean, it's interesting. I try to, I want to speak from my, my experience, not other people's. For me, that experience was extremely interesting because, you know, I, he didn't wake up on a Thursday and go, you know, it'd be a great idea. Let me get a, addicted to Oxycontin because it sounds fun. This will be great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So watching that experience, <clears throat> the struggle and, and the ramifications and all of that, um, I don't, I don't want to save the world. I just want to contribute to it. And, mm -hmm. And, and by then, you don't, you don't know what the ripple effect is. You don't, I don't know how many people are thinking about me today negatively or positively or how that one time I said something to someone made them inspired in a very small way or maybe I was critical and, and actually, you know, broke down a spirit a little bit. I don't know. But I know that we all matter. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just don't have to spend time with everybody. Like, yeah. it's not, that's not my job. And yeah. it's not your, it's no, it's no one's job. It's just doing the best you can for what's around you. Yeah. Yeah. What I, what I, I, there's an Asian proverb that says, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. And I, and, and for me, it's become easier to not try to impose how I think you should be living your life or not living your life. Mm. And, and, and if anything, our lives are to be inspiring because of a relationship that we have with something that's greater than ourselves. That's the key. And, and so that as we're inspiring them, that we become the light. Right. And then they're drawn to us. You know, and I, and I, I, I used to be very dramatic and traumatic. And my daughter used to tell me, Dad, you're way up here. You need to bring it down here. And I'd be like, you don't understand. They're not listening. They're not following <laughs> well, like, so they, like you the, the thing is that my opinion of you is none of your business yeah right yeah. So, right like you know and I, and that's it's a it's a push and pull you know on a, on a daily basis and how do we you know how to it's it's living in the light the line of least resistance but of significance yeah yeah well because i what i've what i've learned is to who and what i am 
and what you think about me is between you, God, and your past influencers. You know, and because lens, I know, yeah, your lens, again, like whatever, whatever created your your vision and your di, you know, your how you digest things and how you interpret things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cause, so now I walk into situations where I have a where I expect nothing, and I just appreciate everything. I'm glad to be there. You know, you got tacos, well, that's bonus material. Right. You know, because I can be, I'm okay without your tacos. I made it this far. Yeah, right. and you know, and, but here's the thing that I find interesting when my when my let's call it spirit or energy is down. That's the practice, right? So, and I find I think that I'm right now in a place where I, it's time for me to plug back in, and go, okay, wait a minute, this is truly what you believe and what 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 fuels your spirit, and yeah. what's happening right now is, is a lot of. You know, it's just, it's insane. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, it's so staying, it's so remembering. And I, I had a breakdown yesterday. Like, I just had one of those days. I went to bed at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And I just went, okay, we're going to take care of your, your, and I tell myself, this is a human experience. You're looking at it from the negative versus positive, or you're looking at it from fear, not love. So we're just going to chill out. We're gonna know that there's a glass of wine involved in a good night's sleep, and then we'll start over again tomorrow. And sometimes mm -hmm. I just have to like go, okay, not my best self. Let's just take a break. Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting that 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 we're forced into surrender. You know that you've got to surrender that hey that there's something bigger and greater than me, and that and and I think for some for us we have to pull it back into ourselves. That, that in our effort to feed everybody else, you know, our prayers become, Lord, help me to feed them despite my own hunger. Mm -hmm. And now I've got nothing to give them because I'm dry, my bones are dry, and now I'm tired. Right. Yeah, you have to love, it's love thyself, right? Because that's yeah. where the energy force comes from. If you're, if you're tired and starving or like my, my will was broken yesterday, I'm not helping anybody. I'm not yeah. making any good decisions. It's yeah. like doing something exhausted and hungry. It doesn't work. Yeah, so yeah. that's when you, you know, you feed yourself. And it's interesting because I think that my experience of, of growing up was very based on if you're self-reflection and was selfishness. So I had to break out the concept that you're allowed to love yourself, which is one of the hardest things to ever accomplish, to really and truly accept yourself for who you are with your flaws and all that, to get to that so you can feed the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it, like I, I told my my daughter one time when she was trying to, she asked me kind of, well, it was about, it was, we're talking about love, and she's like, what is love? And I said, and I was like, you know, I told her, well, instead of looking for love, why don't you just be love? And it says, and start with yourself. Right. It says it's patient, it's kind, yeah. it's gentle, it's self-controlled, yeah. doesn't keep records of what's in, what's meant for it or not meant for it, it lets things go. You but, know, I really struggled for years about the word love. Mm. I didn't like it. It was too esoteric mm. and it confused me. So I, I had to search because people would go, you have to love yourself. And I'd want to say, really? How about that? Yeah. Because I don't get it. Like, what mm. does that mean? Think that you're, that you're what? So I, my quick interpretation of it is acceptance and understanding. Yeah, yeah. Just to blanketly accept them, something to me, I don't know. It's, it's be, sometimes it's complacency and being passive. Yeah. But if you accept, if you understand it and you accept it, there's a lovingness in there. Yeah. Well, because it, again, it, it's not a race or a competition. It's a life experience. Right. It's a becoming. It's an evolution. Right. And, it, and it's like a tree, you know, or, 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 or that bears fruit. And as you become better at being better, then your family, friends, and fans could eat of your fruit which is you just being you, and it doesn't compete with the other fruit trees. Correct, I, and I believe that the more, like the law of attraction, I completely, I, I believe that, um, that it's, the, when I'm thinking in, and, and when, I'm, when I'm freer and I'm in the light and the love, 
then all this stuff just pops into your life the same way, the same way as you're spiraling down, the negativity comes into your life. It's very simple. The universe just says yes. Mm -hmm. His answer is yes. Mm -hmm. So depending upon where I am, that's why yesterday I thought it was best to hide. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I just knew the light was out. I, I, so I always say that my spiritual connection is like a blinking light. You know, it's, it's on, it's, it used to be very, very uh, like a strobe light, on and off, yeah. on and off, on and off. And there were times where it was dark. Now it's definitely on so much more than it's off, but once in a while it turns off and I go, whoopsie. Yeah. Into, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go crawl my little hole, TV, yeah. ice cream, whatever, and just wait until I have energy again and ask for it to come back and then we'll start over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it goes back to your ability to, to acknowledge and recognize that you need to be replenished. Yeah. You know? and, yeah. And, that's, and that's a critical thing in people's lives because they, you know, many parents are out there, you know, unfortunately we don't have kids that we got to deal with, but I'm sure there's parents and dads and moms out there that it's just a lot. Right. You know? Yeah. And, and, and here we have our first world problems. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. But because again, it's really about what we make significant. Mm -hmm. It's picking the battles and saying, you know what, okay. Yeah. You know? And that's where the art of surrender comes into play. That something greater than me exists, and that my job is just to be grateful to that. Yes. And so yeah. rather than. I mean, I mean, that practice of, and I say it's a practice, just like yoga, right? Like one day you can touch your toes and you're like, wow, that was easy. The other day, you're like, why am I a foot away from the ground? Yeah. And I, that's my spirituality is a practice for me. Yeah. 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 And it, 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 not, yeah. Go ahead. No, it's, I, been, it's, been a, it's been an evolution. And I think for many people, it is an evolution. It's, you know, it's a matter of becoming, you know, it's like, does God exist? Does he not exist? Why is he mean? Is he not mean? Is he loving? What is loving? You know, what, what, you know, what, how, what versions of love is it? Do I love this sandwich or do I love you? Right. Um, you know, it's like, there's, it, there's so many things. And then as humans, we got to quiet the noise. Yeah. Ah! Oh, what does this mean? Can you imagine if we could somehow take the energy out of our heads and turn it in, I mean, and, and, and actually, no, the thoughts out of our head and turn it into energy. We wouldn't need electricity. We wouldn't need gas. We need anything. Because mm. I, I mean, meditating or the concept of meditation has always been super bizarre to me. Mm. Yeah. We, we're self-contained individuals. Yes. Right? Yeah. We're designed that way but it's us who make other people and things more significant. Yeah. And saying that I can't live without you. I can't be without you. You know, I need you forever. And what is forever? You got me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, cause, cause again, life is an evolution of, of, of give and take and it's an ebb and flow of, of people and things. Yeah. Um, and so as, you know, the goal is for us, as we get better, then our family, friends, and fans, like I say, could eat of our fruit, which is us being us. Right. Which isn't a race or a competition. And I've learned that I have to surrender, that there's, there's other people taller, smarter, better looking, more money. No. But they're not me. No. You know, they're not right. you. You know, you know, the whole thing, like, you know, and, and it's so interesting how many times you think, oh, they're living the life I want. <laughs> they're living they have it all and then you know yeah. like you spend a moment in the corner talking about something and you realize everyone's ha everyone you know it's like it's the saying is walk walk a mile in their shoes it's yeah. So yeah yep 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 you know and that's in that spirituality path of people's lives you know as 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 you know they they struggle to what what they're supposed to hold on to and you know is this of God and, 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 and why and so forth, you know, has that always been a, a battle that you, that you contended with? Is, oh yeah. That, I that, know my mother, my mother was a hardworking single woman in New York and she pierced the, and in, in the sixties when you got divorced, I'm 56. So in the sixties, when you got divorced, you were slutty. And then my mother, my father didn't contribute. And my mother um, worked her way up from bookkeeper to a, a manager of a private country club right outside of Manhattan. So she pierced the corporate veil for women in um, 
in uh, in the 70s. And so I didn't have religious exposure, right? Like she, I think it, when I was five, she goes, oh God, I should, maybe I should get them baptized. You know, me and my brother baptized because that's what you're supposed to do. Like, what if? So I remember mm. my own baptism mm. as a Protestant, which I never practiced. So yeah. through life, I started like trying to find, I knew there was something and you know what I mean? And, and I kept looking around and tried all these different things and nothing clicked. So when I finally found some things through pain and desperation, basically, you know, it's one thing if, you know, I, then I found spirituality. I'm not religious, but I'm spiritual. And I found that through my, the first thing was reading a book by Brian Weiss called Many Lives, Many Masters. And that was just amazing. Mm -hmm. So, but then <clears throat> how do you implement that? And how do you connect your head to your heart or my head to my heart was like miles. These did not know each other. So then that was, it's a practice and keep going on. I also love the Course in Miracles because I love it says, you don't have to believe it. You don't have to agree with it. But if you practice the principles, it will change your life. And it's true. Mm -hmm. So, and it's all about love. There's nothing else. Yeah. 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 Well, there's love and fear. How much love are you getting? Yeah. Yeah. So I say, I say, let them all fall in love with you. And then you pick who you want in your circle. Right. You know? Cause you know, cause I, I have people in my life that I love, but I love them over there. Right. <laughs> and how cool to not have to, like, I love the fact that I give myself freedom to not want to be with everybody. Like not everyone's great just because you're a human. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or not that you're not great, but you just don't fit in my lifestyle. Right. Your chocolate, I'm vanilla, your strawberry. You know. Moby chocolate, have fun. Yeah, go have fun. Right. And I, and I think that where you learn that attitude, then you're not as mad at them for being chocolate. Right. And not fitting. I always say if we all wanted the same thing, the line would be long. Yeah, yeah. But that's why we have diversity and inclusiveness and learning. And, and if anything, you know, in traveling around the world, you get to learn how much you don't know. Right. Other, other ways of thinking the, the same thing. Right. You know, driving a car to eating a tomato. That's one thing I love when I travel different countries. I'm not so much of a museum person or history buff or any of that. I just love watching the different cultures and like how they live. And I had a boyfriend that was Brazilian and um, he lived in Sao Paulo and so they were you know, definitely not rich per se, but lower middle class, middle middle class. And they, every one of them has maids. They have no actual closets in the interior of their homes. I thought that was fascinating, except they have furniture like an armoire. And so I went to the bathroom. I'm like, I got to see what's under here. I'm assuming it's packed, right? Under the kitchen, under the bathroom sink. They had one shampoo, one. Yeah. I was like, this is brilliant. Like, what, am, what are we doing? Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. We get, we get caught up on the more, 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 more in this society. Right. In the United States, that's what they say. You come here, you're going to get all you want. It's like a buffet. You can do more, 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 and it'll never be enough. Right. And now you're sold out to the more, more, more. Right. What, more money, more power, more knowledge, more sex, more, more, more. And now it consumes you rather than you consuming it. Right. And it's balance. It's not right or wrong, it's finding that healthy and navigating the wind so that you can live a peaceful life. Right. Of, of just moving forward. Yeah. Um, for somebody to inspire you, what kind of attributes do they have to have? <sighs> Kindness. Kindness is everything. There's, you know, I, I, I forget, was it? Twain or Thoreau or someone said that you have to be three things to be successful. Number one, you have to be kind. Number two, you have to be kind. Number three, you have to be kind. Hmm. Um, you know, money where your mouth is, you know, and um, sense of humor. Uh, laughing is just everything. Mm -hmm. um, experience, I guess, you know. Yeah. Besides sadness, what makes you cry? Oh, acts of um, 
there's a the new there's a thing on YouTube right now that's gone viral, um, and it's uh, SNG some good news, and it's from John. It's hilarious. He does it out of his house, which is lovely, and um, he just you know he just amazing acts of kindness what people are doing we focus the news is so horrible and so tainted and so negative and just you know acts of kindness it just makes me cry yeah yeah for sure someone stepping yeah. out of themselves to care about someone else for no reason other than that yeah yeah how do you want people to remember you <laughs> upside down no i'm kidding um <laughs> You know, that, that, that my mom always said, you know, that I added to their life, hmm. you know, and not, you know, and didn't take from their life. Hmm. That's a really important thing that uh, it's a gift. I mean, that is your gift and, and, uh, and, and quieting down the spirit and not trying to be responsible for everybody and everything. It's like your job is just to give that, to be that small bridge to say, yeah. right. I'm not your heart, I'm not your family, I'm just your bridge to get you that place and that space that you need to be. Yeah. Yeah. And not everyone can do that. And yeah. I think it's part of your natural gift and stuff like that. Um, for people who don't know you, what is, what, you know, your, your, your real estate thing you had mentioned in your designs, uh, what's next on the agenda for you? How do you know you've succeeded when you've landed? Mine's not a career thing, you know, I, it's when you, when you live connected, that's I, I so it's funny, when, but I, I'm really bad at writing down your goals and um, uh, where do you want to be in five years? You know, my stuff isn't, you know, I want to live in a house with six bedrooms or any of that. It's really about just living in some serenity that's love based you know and and a lot of most of the i mean don't get me wrong like hey debt free you know making tons of real estate deals and making people's lives happy and you know whatever i don't um and maybe i don't know and sometimes i think that maybe i need to focus on that a little bit more but ultimately it's living in peace and and then therefore it's contagious can you imagine yeah. how cool would it be if this virus the next wave was about positivity. Like for me, I always felt obesity should be based on your negativity. So we know what's who someone's stuck in their negativity, mm. not how much food you ate, because food eating is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, yeah. so I, um, nah, see, I don't have, like, sure, do I want to travel more? Do I want all that stuff? Sure. But living, figuring out how to get the rhythm. That's why I say youth is wasted on the young. It's so true. Like imagine yeah. if I, I mean, you know that if you could put yourself back into the body at 30 with the wisdom you have today, what, yeah. would you not do that? <laughs> yeah. In a heartbeat, yeah. oh, right? Yeah. And unzip this skin, put that back on, be like, let's party again. But, you know. Or maybe not party. I'm kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? It's like, you, it would be so different. Yeah. So yeah. I, I don't, the human experience coming from, you know, we're supposed to be the most intelligent being. And then we, we, we're so, we're so as infants, we're so dependent upon. And then, and then, you know, I mean, you can't live for a day without someone feeding you and doing all that stuff where like deers get up and walk the first, you know, five minutes or something, you know? Yeah. And, and then, then you spend this childhood with the influence of your environment, your parents, and God knows every parent screws that up to some level, you know? Yeah. And then we're, then we, we spend half our time on untying all those crazy knots to get to adults that actually experience some wisdom or some inner peace, however you, however you stumbled upon it, or it was given to you as a gift from God, who knows? And then you die. Like, what the heck? Yeah, yeah. Really, go, really go, line up. Yeah, yeah. Because you go from this need to need, to where it flips, you're like, I need to exist without needing you. Because I, I, you is, I, I just think that you, I just think that you live in this sort of knowing of okayness, you yeah. know, and, and whatever that equates to you and how that like, you know, my needs are different than yours and whatever else. But there's this just Zen quality that if you, that if you've done the work and you paid attention and you, 
and, and did all those things and you just find this like okayness that's awesome it's it's juicy yeah yeah because then it frees up time and space to go do other cool shit with your life mm-hmm. right yeah like, why are you worried why are you crying it's your face let's go what's your fear go, let's go yeah let's go live yeah and go do what you're proud of because you know they say everything is permissible but not everything is beneficial so start being selective on what you ask for right right yeah and 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 if anything in part of that life experience is to leave that wake of goodness and it was mother teresa who said if if anything make kindness your religion i love it yeah and that's kind of what you were saying and kindness to yourself like i i see you know and it's amazing you give to that you know you give to community you give to your kids you give to all the stuff but you matter and yeah. you are that example and 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 kindness to yourself and i yeah. i think that's one of the, the most interesting challenges yeah yeah see there's a little halo going over your head right now and it's just telling me that you're that that uh uh, I remember a song that I learned in church that said, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Did you ever hear that I, song? Yeah. You know, I, it, it never had the part that said to compete against the other light bulbs in the box. Right. You know, it is, it is, it, because when it is the light bulb, it's like when it's your turn to shine, you're not in charge of the brightness. It's just your turn to shine. Right. And, and, and I would just encourage you and others to just shine bright like diamonds and, you know, and all the fragments that, that were and, and weren't that came and gone in life that, uh, they're, they're like glass pieces of a kaleidoscope. And as you look through that thing, you, you know, because of every, the, all the shards in it, you can see the most beautiful patterns that ever existed. Yeah. And it would have never become what it is if it didn't have all of that. Sure. And so this whole need to need, I, I think is, um, I guess I would want people to um, get better at being better, you know, and that if our lives can be anything would be to inspire them, mm-hmm. you know, to, to do that healthier, stronger, um, your health wise, you know, you're, you, you're doing things to be stronger and healthier and so forth to live forever, even if it's one more day. <laughs> Um, I definitely don't want to live forever, but, um, no, yeah, for sure. Working out, taking vitamin C, doing yeah. all those things for sure. Yeah. But, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I'm semi health conscious for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Now for, <clears throat> let me, let me wrap up with this. If you, if they could write a book about your life, what would the title of that book be? Decades. My life, my life changes every 10 years dramatically. Yeah. And it's been a very interesting story. Yeah. From, you know, being a little Hollywood wife to, you know, growing up in the city, in the Yonkers, New York, during the 60s when it was super racial and, you know, fighting as a kid to then moving to the country. My mom moved to the country and I learned how to blow up frogs to, you know, I moved to Hawaii for six months once. I don't know. I just think it's been interesting. It's yeah. been a, it's been a ride, I'll say that. You know, and all the people who have been able to love you and you've loved, uh, they, you know. It's a, it's yeah, there's fun. been a lot of love in my life. I think one of the coolest things about parents divorcing early is that you're forced to create friends as family because you know we have this innate sense to uh, relate, right? Hmm. Um, and. I just didn't have family around because of my situation. And uh, so we cr- I learned how to create friends that become family. Yeah. And it's fun. Yeah. My, my, my life is very rich with people. Yeah. So I, feel, I, feel, I feel extremely, extremely blessed by that. Yeah. When our friends become our family and our family becomes our friends, they call it a family. I like it. I have a big family. You have a big family. Very big. Yeah, a big family and stuff. Um, now, uh, Kim, if people wanted to follow uh, your future shenanigans and adventures and learn more about you, how can they find you? Um, my company is called Four, the number four, Walls That Fit. 
um, real estate because it's all about you. Um, there's a website or whatever, and um, the, my emails Kim at Four Walls That Fit. I'm on Facebook and I don't Instagram as much, but I don't know. That's how they find yeah. me. Yeah, we'll put a link to all of your sites and stuff so that folks can find you. Okay. Um, you know, what what do you, you know, in closing, is there anything that you want to kind of share some wisdom on some young Kim, uh, maybe some eight, <laughs> 15, 18 year old Kim? Oh God. I spent so much time in insecurity. I'd be like, just shut up girl. Everything's fine. Everything's going to be okay. You're going to yeah. do great. You yeah. know? It's just, it's the worry of the unknown as a yeah. kid, it's horrible. It was horrible for me anyway. Mm. And just knowing that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's like they, there, there's a, you know, there's a saying, you know, if, if God wills it, great. If not, that's okay too. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. They, they say, I'm not, on. yeah. I always you tell know, my friends I want to die on the dance floor cause I just love to dance. And I think that would be a great, a great thing. You know, just yeah. I'm, in the middle of a I'm in the middle of a dance. I die. I said, pull me to the side, buy a bar, drink, then call the paramedics. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way to do it. That's the way to do it. Just leave me here. Prop me up against the jukebox. You know, it's funny. You were saying that, you know, you have a history of uh, funerals and whatnot. I, um, I wrote my will and I want to be cremated mm -hmm. and I want pink glitter in it. So when people want to spread me, it's pretty. Yeah, see, there you go. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, one of the things that we do at Inmi Tierra, we get some interesting requests, you know, just like that. We have people because we buy the outfit, we, we scatter, we take right. you back to wherever you go. And they, we had one woman who wanted to be put in a jiffy, uh, jiffy can. Oh, yeah. That was her whole thing. And, um, uh, and so we had another one, we had to pour them out at sea, the cremated remains and stuff. And, you know, so people have their different, unique. We had another person want to be made into a ring. and. You know, but in the meantime, before all that, go live some life and go do some cool things and do what you're proud of and take right. lots of pictures along the way. Right. Appreciate the day. You just don't know. You yeah. just don't know. I mean, whether it's this insane pandemic or a bus. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, it's like run run towards a light. It could be a train or it can be a light. <laughs> you know, just I love it. Do something. And, well, and see. What's yeah, that? I, I appreciate that for sure. Yeah. You know, and... and it is like, I guess I'll close with this, um, um, you know, because I'm looking at a tree out there and I was thinking if, if I could ask that tree how tall he would, how tall he could grow, you know, he probably see as, well, I guess as tall as I can, you know, how deep will your roots go? And I guess as, as deep as they can, you know, you know, they can tear you down, burn you down and crush you. He's like, okay, in the meantime, I got living to do. You know, and if the tree can do it, you know, why can't we? You know, don't worry about the end of the story. Yeah. yeah. I like it. And and if we believe in God, stop giving him so much shit to do with your nonsense. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, just get better That's at being right. better. It's right. not a race or a competition. It's an evolution of becoming. Right. And, uh, and so, again, thank you so much, Kim, for sharing your heart with us. And I appreciate you and I wish you the best. And I'm just a fan of your flame and, and uh, <laughs> continue to go and grow and we'll watch you. Uh, my friends, uh, follow Kim, look to her work. If you need a great realtor, reach out to her. If you need somebody to just listen, uh, reach out to her as well. Uh, this is Jorge Antonio with Enmi Tierra. We'll talk to you soon. Gracias. Hi, my name is Kim Dozier and thank you for taking a look at this video. If you'd like to see more of these, please subscribe to the um, link below uh, in Mitiara. Have a great day.